This 30 pound marijuana bale is one of 11 that came out of a van that careened off of this cliff. Well, Jeanette, it was a small Cessna, but what they have here on the runway is officials tell me they have a safety zone. Studies have shown that up to a third of children kidnapped by strangers are abducted less than a few hundred feet from their home. Back in June, this launch ramp was in full use, but in less than three months, as you can see behind me, it doesn't even get close to reaching the water's edge. Handlers want Wolfgang to return. All it takes is a simple whistle. Now, if you come over here, you can actually see where the engines, these high-speed engines were taken out. Now, I'm actually inside one of these fire shelters. I've actually only been in here for just a couple seconds, and I'm already starting to uh, to sweat here. After voters turned down two different measures to fund a new police station, the city is opening new doors to solve this financial mess. So when you're buying locally, you're making sure the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. After the initial attack, ground crews will look for hot spots like these. Using a tool like this one, they'll break up the soil. You can hear the fire as it crawls up these trees. I mean, the, the pine needles are snapping. And Amazon says it cuts delivery time drastically. But some say the reason they shop online isn't for the savings or the delivery time. Now, the sheriff's office gang task force was also on scene today looking for any possible connection. See visible images from reflected light. So if there's no reflected light, as in this dark room, thermal imaging is able to pick up radiated energy, which is emitted all the time. The kids come out and did, uh, then the uh, college kids, they like to get a pumpkin to fit into their festivities. Dan Duvall is the founder of Sunny Acres. With Halloween approaching, he's getting his annual supply of pumpkins ready to go. Between this and the Christmas trees, it plays a big role in our in our uh, program. The sale of those items helps pay the ranch's bills. However, a KSBY investigation and a quick search of Megan's Law revealed three convicted sex offenders are currently living on the property where the pumpkins are being sold. Two are convicted of lewd acts with a person under the age of 14. Well, number one, they're over there at the house and, and the pumpkins are over here. We're probably not going to have them out here uh, front and center to be waiting on the kids or anything like that. Nonetheless, according to law enforcement, their proximity to children scouring for the perfect pumpkin is a concern. In general, they have to stay 2,000 feet away from any place where children congregate. That could be bus stops, schools, uh, playgrounds, pumpkin patches, that's in the gray area. But according to California law, those requirements do not apply if the sex offender is not on probation or parole. There's been more problems from sex offenders that are living in the creek in San Luis Obispo than there have at Sunny Acres. There's a war off the California coast. Mexican cartels are transporting drugs on the high seas in boats called pongas. Illegal cargo, almost impossible to stop. They have unlimited resources, unlimited funds, and it uh, presents uh, an ongoing challenge. It's a boat that sits very low profile on the water. There are two very powerful motors on the back of it when they're running. It's filled with fuel and marijuana they're willing to go to just about any uh, any means. In the last few years, Homeland Security and Customs agents have seen a massive spike in drug smuggling on the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, we've had about a fourfold increase in the seizure amounts from last year to this year. Homeland Security says more than 100,000 pounds of marijuana have already been seized this year. Street value, $500 million. Agents say the pongas usually take off from northern Baja, Mexico. Most of the landings are on beaches along San Diego and Los Angeles counties. I kind of liken it to a balloon effect. The, as the, the pressure is applied elsewhere, um, they will move to avoid that pressure. Law enforcement pressure is now squeezing the drug trade north to the central coast. They're going to try and make landfall on a beach and uh, go ahead and beach their craft, put it on the, uh, put their, their load on the beach where they've got a waiting offload crew. With their low profiles, the pongas are hard to spot in open water, but as investigators find more boats on beaches and make more arrests, 
They are learning how these types of operations work and are fighting back. Because of some of the, uh, the successes that uh, we have had in interdicting these, these smuggling operations, they have been changing their tactics and they have switched over to um, having pleasure boats go out and rendezvous with these, these vessels and they will uh, actually transfer loads at sea. This is the Blackfin. Um, she's a multi-mission maritime asset, so that means she does search and rescue. We do law enforcement, we do pollution response. Lieutenant Tony Gregg says it's one of the key defenses in the war on maritime smuggling. She's built for speed, she's also built for torque, so she's very capable of towing, uh, and she's very capable at uh, you know, topping out and chasing. And she has to be. Conga boats are known to travel at speeds of over 40 miles per hour. Well, you know, nobody, nobody wants to be caught. Um, and yeah, it's usually uh, it's a it's a high speed chase typically. The Blackfin and her crew have a solid record against the boats. One there on the left uh, is a is a cocaine bust, um, and then you can see the uh, the marijuana leaves uh, there with the uh, with the red X's through them. And uh, each one of those represents a successful case that Blackfin has prosecuted. Homeland Security and the Coast Guard coordinate the busts like military missions. Air support uses advanced night vision cameras to spot smugglers under the cover of darkness. Some battles are won, but the cartels might be winning the war, successfully landing at least one shipment a week on the U.S. shores. And that adds up to millions of dollars worth of drugs every month. As the Coast Guard gets a new, a new weapon in this fight, a new tool, or you know, or a new, a new policy or a new tactic that helps us to prosecute this mission, um, certainly the smugglers are adapting to that. A blue, a blue pit. She's a brindle. Brindle blue pit. Joshua Quintanar, like many others, made his way to Pismo Beach to enjoy the fireworks Thursday. Just as the fun was beginning, his seven-month-old pit bull Ruka had other plans. Fireworks started going off at the pier, so she started just freaking out more and more, and she just unraveled herself and just took herself out of her chain and just took off running. According to Animal Services, that's not uncommon during this time of year. Um, the animals get scared. They don't like the fireworks. They're going to do whatever they can to escape from that area. And a lot of those animals will wind up here at our shelters. She says more than two dozen animals have already come in and expects more. Is it a female? As for Josh, the search has been agonizing. It's intense because I just want to find my dog and it's not cool because she's my little puppy and I love her and I just want to find her. After filling out paperwork at San Luis Obispo Animal Services, Josh received the bad news that Ruka was not there. Find her, let us know. We always like to know they made it home safe okay. and sound. But within minutes, Josh received an encouraging call from Pismo Beach Police. I'm going over there to check right now. They said they may have a dog that would be my puppy. So I'm hoping right now, I'm praying that my dog is there and we will find her. Ruka! <whistles> and sometimes, a little hope Hi, is all you need. Hi, Ruka. How are you, puppy? In How San Luis Obispo. Did you have fun last night? I'm Cameron Polum, KSBY News. Crazy puppy.